what can I say? I got it right here. Frankie the Young, first jersey. Well, I think first year, second year, whatever that may be. Ah, this just seems whether, I mean, we don't know yet if it's going to end up happening or not, but it's, 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 it's something that I don't think should surprise anybody because if there's one big name that's been thrown around during the past year and a half that Barcelona, if needed, would sell in order to make a profit and fix, in a way, their financial issues, not completely, but again, in a way, it's Frankie the Young. So it when I heard the news, like I was literally watching like, Gerard Romero's stream when he said it. So it didn't caught me by surprise. Like it's like not the first time we've heard about it. But to see that it might be like, oh my God, like it might really happen now. That's what caught me off guard a little bit, especially that it needed to happen before June, because then then that money would count like in this year for this year. Like financial reasons, gibberish and all that that I'm not gonna get uh into right now. But at the end of the day, if it ends up happening, I think what will make this a good or bad deal is what Barcelona ends up doing with that money and how they repurpose it and into what positions. Because if they use this money, what they what may count because that like Frankie de Jong still had like Barcelona still have to pay Ajax, I think some amount of the of the transfer. Uh, fee hasn't been been paid in full yet, um, but again, if, if if somehow Mateo Aleman turns Frankie de Jong into, and not literally like turning him into, but like a Lewandowski or maybe a a Jules Kounde in some sort of way alongside more Barcelona players and whatnot, then I think it'll lessen the blow in a way because Frankie is still 24 years old. It's true that he hasn't adapted to the quote unquote Barcelona way, the way we thought he would have already. Um, I think there's been reports that Xavi has been frustrated with Frankie because again, we all know the incredible amount of talent he has. He's a physical specimen as well. Literally, in my opinion, he is a way lesser version of Kevin De Bruyne a really, really technical player and a real spest, like physically, he's strong, he's fast, he's not the player Kevin De Bruyne is, of course, right now, but he has that potential, in my opinion. Whether he has that potential within Barcelona's playing style or in the Premier League, that's another discussion. And that's what's going to pay me if he ends up leaving because he might not have had the success we thought he would have in Barcelona because of the complexity of playing as an interior for Barcelona, which we have spoken numerous times. But I have zero doubt that in a specific context in the Premier League, letting Frankie be Frankie, running like a beautiful horse without any uh, like leashes and whatnot, just flowing his hair back and forth, I think Frankie will be amazing in the Premier League. And then a very erotic picture, Rafa. I know <laughs> he'll be really good in the Premier League where tactically, maybe he won't have those constraints anymore. And then we'll be, Oh my God, look like, Oh my God, look what we gave away. Look the player, but we got to think would the, if Frankie ends up going to United or the Premier League in general, and he ends up, being amazing, ful fulfilling his potential. We got to be really, like, like consider what Frankie had been this Frankie that we're seeing in the Premier League with the that playing style in Barcelona's playing style. So I, I think, honestly, it's just a matter of, of, of waiting and just seeing if he does end up going – how we repurpose that money because if we end up using that money on i don't know I, carlos soler and not big big names i think that's gonna like uh, pain a little bit more for barcelona fans because 
if you let Frankie go, you're thinking, well, then we got to bring Lewandowski or a Jules Kunde or, or like a, a big name. But if we're going to like sign somebody that may end up being really good, that's why like I, I threw out Carlos Soler because he's not a big name. But if he ends up coming, he who knows if he ends up being a great player. So I don't want to like down on a player. I'm saying like a, a name Barcelona fans need excitement. And if you're going to sell Frankie de Jong and you don't bring a big name that fits obviously within Barcelona's style, then Laporta and Mateo are going to face, I think, the, like it's going to be, they're going to face backlash from Barcelona fans if that doesn't happen. Yeah, Ravi, you talked a lot about the sporting sense of it. And I think I'm going to be, I'm going to start with a really negative like my, my, my sense of, of why this should be as negative as it is or as cynical as it could be. And the boring part of this is that I'm having a hard time thinking of this in a sporting sense, because I, I think this is primarily a financial decision. The club feels like they have to make if they're going to sell him to Manchester United. Uh, and again, he can also refuse to go, you know, Ten Hag and not playing in the champions league. Like that's enough for him to say no. And apparently Xavi has also not signed off on it, but the deal itself between the clubs might be 95%. But, you know, I, I think the only sporting thing here is that Pedri and Gabi with the picks over Frankie de Young for the interior spots for the future. And obviously that makes sense, you know, but again, that's, that has nothing to do with de Young. I think de Young would still want to fight for his spot and be competitive. He loves living in, in Barcelona. But to, to look at the financial reasons for why this could happen and even the distribution of funds, because the names there are Koulibaly, Lewandowski, uh, again, nobody like we'll say big, like, like the young players, sub 23 superstars that we keep talking about, like our stars that we're talking about, like, Mm-mm-mm. you were talking like the 27 to 36 or whatever. Like, it'll be a, it would be a, 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 a total of, uh, you know, you using this to pay for Aspliqueta's wages plus whatever, like, and get Barcelona's transfer limit number, a wage number still low enough that you can get everybody underneath and actually get players in there. Because even then it seems like Barcelona is still on borrowed time when it comes to January. That's what some of the rumblings I'm hearing is, is that the January guys, technically Barcelona is still fighting to get under the number that needs to get like without it to, to, to not deal with a penalty next year from January. And so like, I'm, that's what I'm seeing for good reason. Like Sergio Roberto is getting these drive-by shots <laughs> at Roberto, like, Oh, or Man City is signing Erlen Holland and Barcelona renewing Sergio Roberto, but uh, a few things here. And a few things that also I think make a little bit of sense. Like I've said before, you need to get Roberto's renewal done now before January 30th to get Gabi's deal done now, again, that still continues to make sense. The timing of that is really important. All of these things need to be done by June 30th to put them on this finan- this fiscal year's balance and not the next one. Just like what Laporta tried to do even last, se- last season, where he tried to take the biggest losses then and not later, so the wage limit will rise later and improve. So even it's, if, if Barcelona really are continuing to be in that financial dire mess, they're again hedging their bet that they're going to reinforce in January because that might be their only option that they have to get, you know, it might be another tough summer. It might be, it might be a rough summer for Barca again and looking ahead to next January and looking ahead to next summer. And that's how you get out of a problem. And we were warned this is a multi-season problem, you know, just because they lost Messi wasn't the end of that story. Right. And, and there was warnings that there was more coming on the horizon. Again, it's 140 million euros of, of not even debt, but to get under that wage limit. Um, and the, uh, another question too, about where that money goes, like what if De Young has to be moved to make Dembele's renewal possible? That was one of the questions I asked. And at this point, again, we only saw a taste of Ansu and Dembele, but would I trade De Young for what we're seeing of, De, of, of Dembele? I think you have to, because Frankie is a really, really good player. And he's a high level player that it just eats up minutes, especially in that Barca midfield and does a great job uh, figuring out what he is. And now I'm talking about the sporting thing a little bit, but if you have to decide between what you can get from Dembele, he just wins you games. Like again, like single-handedly against Santa de Vigo. Yeah. Everyone played a part, but Dembele just one V one took a guy on and Barca won a match. They shouldn't have where they didn't bring their best. They were kind of limping and they still got a, a, a result in the Liga, you know, and that's because of Dembele. Like that's what he does. And the same argument that I put him in the same category as Ansu and Pedri. Like, I'm sorry. Like I, I I'm not overrating him. But he, what he is is a guy who just wins matches with the ball at his feet, just like Pedri, just like Ansu. There's these moments. There's a blink. You blink, and it happens. And De Young doesn't have that ability to kind of just win a match with a moment, with sheer force of will. He's also a different player. And from the sporting perspective, that kind of is what frustrates me. That, as I, I tweeted yesterday, the first thing I thought was we never got to see De Young at the pivot for any extended amount of time. Now, in three years, 
So people are saying, oh, hey, look what he did in three years. He doesn't deliver fourth. And this whole thing was that eventually, right? Eventually, Xavi, eventually somebody sees him as the pivot, as that player that's going to dribble forward, maraud forward, use his defensive acumen. We're never going to see that Frankie de Young, because even at Ajax, he didn't really do that. He has it's a double pivot with Shona, who kind of protected him a bit. Uh, but anyway, we're not going to ever see him at a pivot. And yet, Frankie de Young, for 75 million euros, will have come and gone with no succession plan for Busquets. And like in my brain, I cannot make that make sense where, right. You got through the, the whole Frankie de Young era is come and gone and still Boosie remains. And it's not that Boosie's done anything wrong. It's that uh, even with the transfers coming in, like Kessier is not a replacement for Busquets. I, I talked to the Milan guys. He is an interior. That's what it is. And I think there's a lot of pressure right now being put on Nico to be in a double pivot potentially, because again, with Pablo Torre, who, I don't want to overrate him, but Paolo Torre is a very, very good teenager. Another very, very good teenager. He might flop. He may not be ready for the moment. But I'm telling you, from the responsibility that he takes on uh, for racing Santander, he is their best player. He very much alone puts that team forward into promotion to the second division. Um, Pablo Torre is, just like Pedri and Gabi, I think he's just, a, I mean, he's 19, so he's a little bit older even. So he is ready, I think, to step in. Maybe not even year one, but maybe it's Barca B plus, you know what I mean? We get a taste of him a little bit and we get it, but there's a lot on Nico then moving forward. Right. And, and there was a, there's a report that came out today. He might even go on loan or the club might even choose to sell him with a buyback. And that information is, is antithetical to the idea that somebody is as a Nico is going to be the long-term pivot to replace Busquets. I just, I don't know what Barca's planning at that position. And it's terrifying. But I want to, I want to ask you about this real quick, because I, I agree Maybe, like, if we're looking at this, like, in black and white, there's a, quote-unquote, overbooking of the interior role. Gabi, Pedri, uh, Paulo Torre coming in, Kessi coming in. Um, Sergi Roberto is still going to be in the team, uh, whatever that may be, to whatever role he plays. And, and Nico uh, played interior, Nico too. Nico played year. interior, he, too. He wasn't a pivot. He was an Except, interior. That's about five, six players. So there's clearly an overbooking that you – you might say, well, we are kind of covered that we can let Frankie go in a way and we we right. still have a bunch of interiors. Don't you think that maybe that's what not Xavi necessarily, but La Porta Mateo and all the, the, the directors seem like, hey, like you said, we still don't have a quote unquote successor for Busquets. Whoever he ends up being, it's not going to live up to Busquets' standard. That's obvious. But, and probably not even come close, but at least like something that might resemble at least playing style-wise what Busquets is. Don't you think that maybe this could be like, hey, let's cut our losses with Frankie because we are covered as an, with the interiores. And let's just try and maybe whether they're right or wrong, they don't think Frankie would ever excel as a long pivot yeah, and I mean, then try and like repurpose that who that might be. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't heard any rumblings and when I, I mean, Sui Mendy was mentioned a while ago. Uh, I know the big things like Chuameni, that's not going to happen because of what Monaco, what she just said, like the, the big young stars. Make it happen. Make it happen. I, I mean, I, I push back a little on the overbooking though, because you could have said that the forward line is overbooked. That's why Adama Traore doesn't get any minutes. That's why Luke de Young, and Martin Brothwaite, you know, Luke DeYoung has his role, but Brothwaite doesn't see the field at all, even when he came back healthy. You could say those things are overbooked, but in the same way in that midfield, like that midfield is limping. Like, right, I mean, that midfield played with two midfielders. Frank and Young was one of them, plus Gabi, right? So even if Kessier arrives and Pablo Torre maybe or maybe isn't ready, like even if Kessier arrives, that means he's that third midfielder then when Busquets inevitably gets a suspension because Busquets he got yellows this year. He's going to get suspended. He does get suspended every like, like seventh match. He gets suspended because he just picks up those yellows in transition. And you think a year older Bruce Getz is going to get less yellows in transition. I don't think so. And then the same thing, if Pedri continues to be as injury plagued as he is now, what every seventh game you're missing two of your three starters. And now all of a sudden it's Kessier, it's Gabi. And you hope you didn't put Nico out on loan because he wants more minutes. Right. And it's like, I'm just saying like about the overbooking, like, these squads that compete across everything and for Xavi to push for second to be a part of the Spanish, I mean, uh, of the Super Cup, like, like you need a deep squad. Like you need to be six deep at midfield in the best of it. And, you know, so immediately my thought too is like, yeah, Pablo Torre is supposed to be the young 
the, the Barca B midfield is going to get start to get moved in, right? But then beneath that, like I'm trying to look at that midfield for Barca B and Oriana, uh, under Oriana was supposed to be the next guy. And then, you know, there are some other kids, right? There's Alex Garrido, there's like, but that's what I'm already looking at. I'm saying, is Xavi going to get to a point next season where like three of those midfielders that we're mentioning are all out injured and he's got to hit the panic button, right? And then all of a sudden you've got Eric Garcia at the pivot spot and you're like, what is happening right now? Uh, and like, and those things, not to say that Eric Garcia won't be, I know people have fun with that and people a lot suggest about the pivot thing, but I always defend Eric Garcia. I, I worried about him as a pivot. I just, I'm, I'm throwing that out there. Like, I, I don't want to pick, I don't want to take too much time thinking about that, but everything he does well, I don't, I, and every, I, let me reverse that. Everything he does poorly, I can see being greatly exposed at a pivot position. And so I just, I don't want to think about that right now. Like I'll consider it if Xavi does, cause I trust Xavi. But I, I mean, I think the last question for you, Rafa, is that if this is it for De Young, how will we remember his time at Barcelona? Because I, I think you and I have been, I say much more kind to him. I don't think I've ever gone full blown, like even in the times when he didn't do well and things weren't working, I always think it was more of a structural thing. And I always thought there was things to fix. Like I felt like at his worst, it was a spacing with Busquets. And to me, his problems always just seems to be instructional, like from the manager, like this is what the manager is trying to do. And we saw these improvements under Xavi already about one touch passing a little bit quicker, his spacing with Busquets and, and, I, I, there were moments under Xavi when it started to make sense. And I think if you hear that Xavi doesn't want him to leave, it again goes back to my thing about the finances. I can see the club basically saying, we are going to sell you. Like, can we sell you please for 80 million euros? And Xavi still not signing off on it. And that, and both of those things being true, because I can see how Xavi sees this player, sees his quality and says, I know how I'm going to make this work. Even next to Busquets, there are moments and we need to just make those moments all the time. Can that happen? I mean, that's what most people say, right? Inconsistency is how we'll remember his time at Barcelona. But I disagree with that. I think we are going to remember him as a good player in a rough time for the club when there was clubs going through a lot of transition and a lot was on his shoulders. I, I think it's a mixture of both. And then like real quick with the, the Xavi thing, I think it, he might. And I, I think I don't think he wants to part ways with Frankie. But at the end of the, the day, due to the dire economical situation la porta mateo and company might go to Chevy like hey i know you don't want to like sell gabi but you also want like eight new players because you need a left back and a right back a center back and this and that and like the only way we might be able to kind of do that is we gotta sell him so you gotta pick your poison do you want frankie but then we can't give you a left back a right back a center mid and this and that so it's kind of like la porta and uh and Mateo going up to Xavi, you got to pick a pill like the Matrix, the red or the blue. Yeah, it, it, it is what it is, sadly. And I think Xavi, during his last press conference, he was so like his joy was taken out of him because I think he kind of knew that, damn, like I'm going to have to sign off on something that I don't necessarily want to because of all the needs of this team. So he just like the joy that he came in and positivity. Now it's like, you see him as like a dementor in Harry Potter sucked the life out of him. Yeah. Um, so, and then going back to Frankie, I, I, the thing is, I think it can be everything that you said can be, it's like a little bit of everything with Frankie. Yeah, it is true. He came in during one of, if not the worst eras of Barcelona's recent history, without a doubt. Uh, the, has he been inconsistent? What, a lot of people say that you don't necessarily agree with. I think he kind of has been to a certain extent because of it. I think it's we're prisoners of expectations. And when Frankie came in, I think the majority of Barcelona fans were glad that he came in at such a young age. Even the transfer fee, given how crazy the transfer fees had been for the most part, wasn't that crazy given the context. So. I think there was a certain like unity between everybody in that span. Like, Hey, Frankie is really good. He's going to be the guy that leads the way in Barcelona's midfield for the next 10 years. So I think honestly, my comparison, it's kind of like a romantic comedy in a way that it's like the, the couple was just, wasn't just meant to be and they part ways. They cry together 
and then they wish the best for, hey, I wish you nothing but the best. And then you see the other person getting married, having kids, and you're like, it hurts you. But at the same time, you know that it, it wasn't going to work out with that person. So I think to me, that's if that does end up happening, that's how I will remember Frankie, what could have been. 